Hello, in this video we're going to talk about the connectivity of networks. We'll begin with a definition. Let A be a square matrix with eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, and so on. The eigenvalue lambda sub i is said to be dominant if the absolute value of lambda sub i is strictly greater than the absolute value of lambda sub k for all k not equal to i. The eigenvectors associated to the dominant eigenvalue are called dominant eigenvectors. And again, we are working with real eigenvalues in our course. Okay, so let's move on to an example. Suppose that the eigenvalues of A are uh, negative 5, negative 2, 1, and 3. Then the dominant eigen value, we would say, is negative 5. And the reason why we say that is because the absolute value of 5 is strictly greater than all of the other values. For our second example, suppose that the eigenvalues of A are given by negative 4, negative 2, 1, and 4. Then the dominant eigenvalue here, we would say, does not exist because there is not one particular eigenvalue that's strictly greater in magnitude than all others. We have a fairly long theorem. I'll, I'll put it up here, I'll read it, um, and then we'll just use it to compute something called Gould's Accessibility Index. So for our theorem, let A be an m by n matrix with n linearly independent eigenvectors and a dominant eigenvalue. Let the vector x0 be any non-zero column vector in Rn having a non-zero component in the direction of the dominant eigenvector. Then the sequence given by successive iterations, um, successive multiplication by matrix A. So it's a recursively defined sequence of vectors. x1 is equal to A times x0. And then to obtain x2, x2 equals A times x1, and so on. Then this sequence will approach a dominant eigenvector of A. Based on some of our work up to this point, you might have an intuitive sense for why this might be true. We will not prove it in this particular course, but we will use it to compute something called Gould's Accessibility Index. Okay, so let's begin uh, by considering a transportation network given by the following. And we can write the adjacency matrix. Now all roads in our network are two-way streets, so our matrix will be symmetric. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4 are the cities or the nodes in this network. So for example, city 1 and 2 are connected. So we'll put a 1 in row 1, column 2. And similarly, we'll put a 1 in column 1, row 2. 2 and 3 are connected, so in row 2, column 3, we'll put a 1, and in row 3, column 2, we'll put a 1. Also, 2 is connected to 4, and 3 is connected to 4. So let's fill in our remaining zeros. Our second row looks like 1, 0, 1, 1. The third row, 0, 1, 0, 1. And the last row, 0, 1, 1, 0. Again, this is a symmetric matrix. If you were to look across this diagonal, you would see that our entries are symmetric with respect to that diagonal. OK, so we're going to do something called um, computing Gould's Accessibility Index. And so to compute Gould's Accessibility Index, what we will need to do is we'll need to perform uh, three steps here. So 
Let's write down our steps and then we'll go through and actually compute them. So the first step is we will need to construct a new matrix called B. So we will construct matrix B by taking A and adding the n by n identity matrix to A. Now the reason that we do this is something uh, called the Peron Frobenius theorem and we won't get into the details of that here um, but what this does and the reason why Gould did this um, it ensures that we do have a dominant eigenvalue it ensures that the dimension of our eigenspace is one and it, it ensures that um, we have a, a dominant eigenvector here who has all components that are positive so it does a lot of nice things for us all right in step two we will find the dominant eigenvalue and I'll say E vector, eigenvector of matrix B. Lastly, we will normalize. the eigenvector. And what this will give us, this eigenvalue here, this will give us a measure of the overall accessibility of the network. And we'll see that in a minute. So that eigenvalue will give us the overall accessibility index of the network. And the components of this dominant eigenvector, once we normalize it, will give us uh, the, the relative accessibility of the different cities. Okay, so let's go through and do this. Let's go through and, and do these steps. Again, we've got three steps to do. So uh, for us, we will construct matrix B by taking A. Taking A and adding the n by n identity matrix, in this case the 4 by 4 identity matrix. So matrix A looks like a 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and a 0, 1, 1, 0. Adding the 4 by 4 identity matrix, that's the matrix with 1's down the main diagonal, zeros everywhere else. And adding those two matrices together, that's going to give us matrix B. So what we get is a 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, and a 0, 1, 1, 1, and last row 0, 1, 1, 1. Now, once we have this matrix B, we can certainly perform our calculations by hand, but a better strategy, it, you know, some of these matrices are going to get pretty big, is just to hop over and use MATLAB. So I'd like to show you what that's going to look like. Okay, so soon okay good we've got our MATLAB screen I'm going to type in what matrix A was and I'm going to do that uh, certainly with the square brackets we'll enter all our zeros and ones and we'll separate each row by a semicolon and that's how MATLAB knows that we're ending a row Okay, we'll hit enter and now we want the 4x4 four four identity matrix and so in MATLAB that's going to be I like an eyeball EYE4 so that's the 4x4 four four identity we now we've got our matrix B and once we've got matrix B what we want to do is we want to find the eigenvalues in the eigenvectors and one way to do that is to take a square bracket V comma D equals eig of matrix B Okay, so let's hit enter, see what we get. So we get a couple of different outputs here. The first thing we, we get is this big matrix V for our eigenvectors, and then we got four columns, we got four different eigenvectors, and each of those eigenvectors correspond to the four different eigenvalues, and our eigenvalues are right there on the diagonal of matrix D, 
like we've got a negative 0.4812 uh, and so forth. But our dominant eigenvalue in this problem turns out to be 3.1701 and there's probably more digits in here so we don't want to just type over that number and kind of lose the rest of the digits that MATLAB is storing for us. We want to call that value, we want to say our dominant eigenvalue equals D fourth row fourth column. Okay, good. So we've done that. And now we'll pluck out our dominant eigenvectors. So we want all rows of matrix V, fourth column. Okay, so we've got that. Now, this is really giving us a lot of progress towards Gould's accessibility index. And um, to really make sense of this, what we want to do is we want to normalize this dominant eigenvector. And there's a lot of different norms you could use out there, but the norm that we'll use, it looks like 1 divided by the sum of all the entries in our dominant eigenvector. And we'll multiply that scalar times the vector dominant eigenvector. All right, so there we go. Once we get these values, this tells us about the accessibility of the different cities that we were, were looking at in our, our map. So you can see uh, some of these cities have a very high accessibility index, like the second one there has a 0.3154. Other cities are quite low. Okay, so let's take a look and what we have. We'll write everything down here and kind of summarize what we've got. So first thing of all, we found our dominant eigenvalue and that dominant eigenvalue was uh, in MATLAB. That was a 3.1 one seven approximately and then the dominant eigenvector was the vector associated with that but this eigenvalue this is what's known as Google's accessibility index so that tells you kind of how connected or how accessible the entire network is okay we also had the dominant let me erase this up here. This was our dominant eigenvalue. I think I said that, but I wrote the wrong thing. Our dominant eigenvector, um, that had the four different components in it. We did go ahead and normalize it. And I'm just going to write an approximation here because we're certainly rounding off some of those values. MATLAB gave us more digits of precision, but this is uh, close enough to get an idea of the relative accessibility for the different cities. And we can see that second one right there, um, that tells us that that city is much more accessible than the others. If we go back and look at our matrix, that was uh, city number two or city B, whatever you want to call it, um, certainly much more accessible to other parts of the network than these, these uh, nodes or vertices that live more on the um, periphery.